Hi everyone, my name is Emily Teacher and today we'll be reading The 49ers. The story was so exciting. It was in all the newspapers. It was December of 1848. Television and radio were discoveries that lay in the distant future. So they weren't there yet. Newspapers were the sole means of finding out what was happening in the world and something to stir up the reader's imaginations was going on in California. Millions of people in homes across the United States read about it over the breakfast table. President James Polk had just confirmed what until then only a relatively few people knew for certain. Gold had been discovered in California, lots of it. Now everyone was in on the secret. Okay, there was gold all of a sudden that was found in California. Everyone knows about it. Let's see what happened. <clears throat> a typical worker in the 1840s earned about $1 a day. Gold sold for $20 an ounce. And in California, gold was lying on the ground and in stream beds, exposed to view, just waiting to be picked up. Not surprisingly, thousands of Americans quit their jobs and headed for the promised land in the West. Many left behind their families. If they had misgivings, they tried to disguise them from their wives and children. The plan was to return as soon as they struck it rich. Now it was 1849, only nine years later. Those who joined the hosts taking part in the California gold rush were called the 49ers. There were no airplanes, no trains, no cars, no roads to California in 1849. San Francisco was a hamlet of less than 2,000 people. Many Easterners took the hazardous journey by ship. From New York, they had to sail 17,000 miles around the tip of South America. The journey took about six months. So there's North America and South America. They started here on the east coast of North America, went all the way around South America and back up to the west coast. So it took a very long time by ship. <clears throat> Those with families and lots of goods to carry traveled over land by covered wagon. This journey also took about six months. Crossing the Nevada desert, they experienced the worst part of the journey. Water was scarce. Often, the exhausted travelers had drunk the last drop with days to go before journey's end. They were easy victims for merchants who set out from San Francisco and traveled east to meet the parched travelers. So these travelers were very thirsty. They needed water. And so merchants, people who sell things, brought water. These business businessmen brought wagons loaded with barrels of water. The travelers could now get water for a price. Tormented by thirst, they paid a dollar, five dollars, even a hundred dollars for a glass of precious liquid. Merchants like these took advantage of the law of supply and demand. This law states that something is worth whatever someone is willing to pay for it. So if you really need something, you will pay a lot of money for it, right? That's supply and demand. Sam Brannan understood this law better than anyone. He was a San Francisco merchant and one of the city's founders. The people who had first discovered the gold had tried to keep it quiet, but word leaked out. Soon after Brandon heard the news, he repeated it to large gatherings of eager listeners. He waved a jar of gold dust as proof. Suddenly, lots of people wanted tools for gold digging. They needed pickaxes and shovels. They needed metal pans necessary for sifting through small rocks, water, and sand. And people could get this equipment, again, for a price. Before spreading the good news, Brandon had prepared. He had gone around the area, shrewdly buying up every pickaxe, shovel, and pan he could locate. A metal pan Brandon bought for 20 cents, he could now sell for $15. And even at that price, there was no shortage of takers. In nine weeks, Brandon made $36,000. He went on to become the richest man in California. He was so rich, he even circulated his own money. So Brandon was very smart. Once they found gold, he thought, people are going to want to come and dig for gold. So he bought all the pickaxes, shovels, and pans at a cheap price and sold it to people for a very expensive price. That's how he became the richest man in California. Over a quarter of a million people had poured into California by the mid-1850s. Many of the new arrivals were attracted to San Francisco. The city grew at an astonishing rate. The price of a house went up tenfold in less than a year. So the house price was 10 times more only in one year. For a period of time, the number of people living there doubled every 10 days. Most never got rich, and many who did were not able to hold on to their newfound wealth. 
Sam Brannan died a poor man in 1889. He didn't even have enough money to pay for his own funeral. There were some winners, though. These were the 49ers who had not come to prospect for gold, but to work hard at ordinary jobs. These were the trailblazers who built California and made it what it is today, the Golden State. So Sam Brannan, the richest man in California, by the time he died, he was poor. He had no money left. But the people who were the winners of this gold rush situation were the 49ers. Those were the people who went to California to work hard at regular jobs. And that's why California is such an amazing state today. Thank you for listening. We have links related to each video here. If you want the link related to this story, you can find it down in the description below.